It is one well in the name of Jesus. It is to well lead our souls today. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Welcome one more time to the Transforming Woman. Today is Monday the 11th, and we are very much blessed and thankful to God to be here. Let us start with a word of prayer. Jesus, our ever-living Father, we thank you because it's by your grace that we are here today. We thank you for a new light, a new love, and a new shine in our lives. You've been ever faithful. You've been ever kind. Your word today, O Lord, shall not miss us, O Lord. As we are here to receive from you, O Lord, our hearts shall be made new. You will give us a new heart this morning and a new burning a new yearning for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Jehovah Yoni Jehovah Yoni Jehovah your name, Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Ah, that you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift your name on high. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. Ah, that you pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift your name on high. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, we love you, Lord. For you are God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, we love you, Lord. For you are God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Yes, we love you, Lord. For you are God. Mighty man of war. Lion of Judah. We bow down and worship you. Yahweh, Yahweh, 
command do what only you can do. Mighty man of war, lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you. Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do. I sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. You are God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. You are God. You touch my life with his sense, my life changed. He touched my life with his sense. My life changed. He touched my life with his hands, and my life became a new one. Jehovah touched my life with his hands. My life changed. He touched my life with his hands. My life changed. He touched my life with his hands. My life changed. He touched my life with his hands, and my life became a new one. Jehovah touched my life with his hands. My life changed. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. You are God. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. You are God. Mighty man of war. Lion of Judah, we bow down and worship you, Yahweh, Yahweh, come and do what only you can do, come and do what only you can do. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in the darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. Oh, I've known you as a friend. And I have lived and the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing all the goodness of God, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able. 
Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, King of glory, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, wearing basu, Jehovah is your name. Oh, mighty warrior, wedding battle, Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, wedding battle, Jehovah is your name Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We just want to welcome you. If you are joining us for the very first time, we are excited. We are glad to have you. This is the transforming woman. And in short, it is called TTW. But before we go ahead, we are live on Facebook. Please, please do us a favor by sharing the live video and be a blessing to somebody. And if you are actually joining us from the Zoom link, it is okay. They have sent the link on the WhatsApp group, so you can just minimize your page, click on that link and share, so we can get to as many pos people as possible. Praise the Lord, and the Lord bless you as you do that. So as we started, this is the transforming woman, and in short, it is called TTW. The scripture for this man, it is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, which says, But we all we unveil faces, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So you might be asking, what is TTW all about? This is a place where women gather, regardless of their age, their status, or their denomination for fellowship, to behold the face of our master, Jesus Christ. And in the course of that, they evaluate themselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual good. It is a place where women are trained to thrive, understand time, seasons, and stand the gap in the place of prayer for themselves, their family, and the nation. We use the word woman we use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place where we have only one objective and no alternative, which is either Jesus or Jesus. Our mission is to gather to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual goods. Our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for God. They are conscious of their lives in the secret. 
They are ready to fulfill purpose, enjoy marriage, and promote godly parenting. Our values are love, humility, compassion, giving, excellent self-control, and sacrifice. That's it. You, we, are, we are excited to have you, and you are very, very much welcome. Just stay with us for some few minutes, and I'm so confident that you are going to be blessed because the Lord has kept us something that is amazing this morning. So we are in the month of April, and the theme for this month is salt and light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. If you, you see all of that, but last week, by the mercies of God, we actually was dealing or dwelling just with verse 13, 13, which we actually did not finish. And we are, you know, doing a continuation of it. Um, sometimes, I mean, I feel like the, the topic salt and light is so vast in such a way that it's impossible for us to be able to consume everything about it this year. So obviously, because we do it every year. So by the mercies of God, we're going to have um, a team like this next year, which will be able to, you know, dig deeper about God's expectation and how he has called us to be the salt and the light of this generation. So it will be essential for us to complete what we started last week so we can have the understanding of the mystery of soul. Just to do like a recap of what we talked about last week, we specifically, if it's possible, I know I didn't tell you, if we can still have the Matthew 5, 13 on the screen, that will be fine. Whenever you are able to get it, that will be fine. So last week, we specifically dwelled just on the verse 13, when the Bible says we are the salt of the earth. But we started by defining what salt is. I assumed that everybody knew or knows what salt is. But then, you know, it was not, I didn't want to just end on assumptions. So I always like to define the main subject of the day. And we said it is a white crystalline substance that gives seawater its characteristic taste and it is used for seasoning or preserving food. We went ahead and we talked about the Matthew 5, 13, and the Bible says that you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under feet by men. So actually, we didn't even complete the whole of chapter, the whole of verse 13. We just use the one phrase, you are the salt of the earth. And pretty much that's what we're going to be completing. So the other part, if the salt has lost its flavor, I don't know when we'll have time to talk about it because we have to actually talk about light. So I'm sorry about that, but it's essential for us to actually, you know, it's better we get one thing, understand that thing, even if we do not, we did not complete everything. So I did mention that the Bible says you are. So there was not, that was not something that we need to debate. We need to argue. It was not a suggestion. It was not asking you if, are you willing to be, or would you like to be, it's a command that you are. So it means you already made up of it. It's not something you have to actually, how can I be the sword? You're already the sword unless you are not a Christian. And I said to us, if they say you are a nurse, I gave a couple of examples, which it wouldn't be so necessary for us to go back, but just to, for those who are actually maybe hearing us for the first time, I give an example for if they say you are a nurse, a registered nurse in the diaspora, specifically in the United States, that actually means that you have gone through intense two years studies in the nursing school and you have passed your board exams whether you work in a facility or you work in the hospital whether you work you help patients or not just the fact that you have the license you are qualified to be called a registered nurse so what does that imply when God says you are the salt of the earth all you need to do is to have given your life to Jesus Christ as the Lord of your as the Lord and Savior of your life so once you have made that decision, you are the salt of the earth. And so there will be expectations from you as the salt. You are not actually wanting to find out how I can become a salt because you're already the salt. But if you have not made that decision, then the first thing to do is to actually make the decision to make God your Lord and your Savior. Then now you become the salt of the earth. So pretty much you can go back and watch um, the last week video. And we started by 
talking on the functions of the salt. I say, if we can actually understand what the natural salt we use day to day, you know, in our cooking and all the rest, if we actually know what it is used for, then we should be able to have an understanding of why it was used in the scripture. We talked about the wife of Lord, she became a pillar of salt. And then Matthew chapter five talked about salt. We said God would have used, Jesus would have used sugar. There are so many other things that are sweet, that are, you know, they taste good that he would have used. So but for him to use, because it's never stupid for him to use salt, then there is something we should need to dig. There is a mystery we must find out about salt and see God's intention of us as believers, as the salt of the earth. So we looked at some of the functions of salt. We said the first function was, it is used for um, as a flavoring enhancer or a seasoning enhancer. And we said these are the category of people that um, add flavor to the life of people. These are the type of people that help to bring beauty to your life. You that type of person that you know people testify that since I got to know you, since I got to have a relationship with you, there's just something about you that I like talking to you all the time. When I leave you, there's just there's just I'm just energized, I feel encouraged, I feel better, I feel like taking a better step. So those are people. Some people have been wired, some people have actually trained themselves because I gave two categories. It's either you were born with the gifting or you actually practice it, you train yourself because it is a essential for you to have. So those are the people who are seasoners, those people that when you come in contact with them, your hidden potentials, the things that God has put in your inside that you be proud to that time, you are afraid to manifest. But when you come in contact with these people, you cannot carry a dead baby in your womb. You cannot carry a dead potential. They help you. They jack up what is in your inside. We talked about Mary and Elizabeth. We looked at the scripture, Luke chapter one, and we saw that when, um, Elizabeth saw Mary, the Bible says the baby in her womb, leap, jumped up. So for joy, it wasn't just about physical baby. We, we really emphasize on that. So those are your potentials, are your giftings, and all the things that God has done. So people that when you come in contact with them, you actually, you know, it actually enhances, brings out. And I said that God has not created any non entity. I mean, I think probably about 10 years ago. I've never known I had any gift in my life. I've never known. So there are some people you meet, you just need to hear them talk. And then certain things in your inside begin to find expression that I need to come out, I need to come out. So all of us need seasoners. And it is also good for us to be seasoners. We talked about the second type of function, which is salt is used for food preservation. And on that, that I said, we're going to look at three ways you can use salt to preserve food, which we were able to deal just with the first way. We said you, it can be used as a refrigerant. Prior to technology and the advancement of things, now we have fridges. A lot of people don't do it, although we still do it somehow, but especially people in the third world country, most of them, I remember we used to do it back home because we didn't have a fridge. But, you know, I said to us that you use salt to preserve food. If you have something um, fresh and you don't have probably the time to boil it or so, you use salt to preserve it. So we actually looked at that and we said these are the category of people that preserve things that are in their case so they won't be destroyed. We look at so many examples. We look at the, uh, the story of um, Moses' mother, how she preserved the destiny of her child. We said these are the category of people that wants anything that is around your influence, around you, you don't allow those things to die. It means things are not permitted to die around you just because they are close to you, they're not permitted to die. So these are the categories of people. We also looked at the Hebrew midwives. We saw that in Exodus, we looked at Bathsheba. So we actually look at three empirical examples last week, which will not be dwelling too much on that. So let's go to the main thing for the day. If you didn't actually watch the video, it's on YouTube, it's on, on Facebook. It will be essential for this place to watch it. It was amazing. The Lord was helping us or the Lord helped us last week. So this week, as I said, the second portion is that we use salt for food preservation. And remember I said there are three importance, three ways you can preserve food using salt, which the first way we did on that topic, point two, was that it can be used as a refrigerant and a refrigerant. So today we want to look at the B parts under food as you know, under using salt as um, as a way of preserving food. The second way or the sub point under the main two is that salt acts as a dehydrator. 
salt acts as a dehydrator. That's another way you can use to preserve food and we'll explain. So somebody might be asking, what is a dehydrator? A dehydrator is an appliance that is used to remove water from food. So if it's not just food, at least this one, most of us practice even in this very central. Maybe I'm speaking, somebody just did it yesterday. If you, if your daughter or somebody, even you, an adult, if you spill water on the floor, what is the first thing we do? If we spill water on the floor, all of us know, at least I know that like 90% of people know that when you spill water on the floor, on the carpet, the first thing you look for is you go get salt and you pour salt on that place. Why do you, you know, sometimes I know we do certain things and we don't know why we do it. And that's why we gather to them because we actually do not know it. There are a lot of things I was able to learn even about salt when I was doing the research on this topic. I was like, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know it. So it's used as, you know, it, it acts as a dehydrator. It has the ability to absorb. So the reason why we put um, salt on, um, on when water spills on the carpet is so well to absorb the water. Sometimes some people use it with, with um, and potatoes. You put, that's why when you peel it, you put salt. You put salt on it. Why do you put salt? To absorb that water from the, um, the, the potatoes. That's why you put salt. So it can use to absorb. So it does the same thing for food, not only for um, the carpet, but actually people use salt as an act of dehydrator. And we have said that it is just the appliance. You use it to absorb water. Now in food, Salt removes the moisture. It will be important for us to know why it absorbs and why it is relevant. So it removes the moisture to deprive the disease causing microorganisms. We have entered biology. <laughs> there is who will give way for our nurses. You know, I did not do <laughs> To be explaining, I'll probably give them an opportunity to explain better because they will know Kelly be ready <laughs> after I do my part. So you tell us the biologic side of this. Hallelujah. So in food, salt removes the moisture to deprive the disease causing microorganisms a chance to spoil the food. So as long as salt is present, there is no way that such diseases can grow there. I don't know, Kelly, if you are, if you want to explain a little bit, you can. You can just raise your hand, I'll know you're ready. If not, I'll continue. Maybe you can explain to us, you know, what it means by microorganism getting into food. And if you have an idea. <laughs> okay, she's not ready. But anyway, let me just explain it a little way. I've done the research, you get it. So it doesn't only absorb the water. The reason it does that is because if the water is present, those micro, um, microorganisms are going to have access. That's what grants them access to bring disease and destroy the food. So when salt is put to that food, added to that food as a dehydrator, it is there to quickly absorb that water to prevent the food from being affected by diseases, from being affected by the microorganism. At least even before doing this research, I know normally, like the example I gave us that putting salt on, when water spills on the carpet, we actually do it, or I don't know if I'm the only person wrong, before, I've always known it's for two reasons. Number one, to absorb the water. Number two, when you put salt on that carpet, it won't smell. It won't smell. So what is that? So we, sh we should actually be reflecting. It means so it actually does something. It means if you keep that water there without doing anything, there is something because of the presence of that water, it has the capacity to attract something which was not supposed to be there naturally. So if you don't do something about it to absorb that water, the microorganisms are going to have access to that food and they're going to destroy, they're going to put disease in it, they're going to condemn or destroy the food. I've tried my own. <laughs> I've tried my own over the biology. So let's go now to what's God's expectation as dehydrators, looking at salt as an act of dehydrator. So looking at that, how can we put it now on, in our day-to-day -day life? How can we put it? What is God's expectation? Who are a, a category of people, a group of people who are dehydrators, who are they? You know, these are people who have the grace not to allow intruders have access and destroy, you know, the company that they find them, themselves. They will not allow external factors contaminate the environment, contaminate where they are. I hope we are trying to get it. These are a group of people where they are. 
For example, let me use myself. I'm not saying I'm a dehydrate. I just want to use it to explain this particular point. So if I'm found in, let's say, TTW, because the reason why we're actually giving these things out is because, okay, somebody says well understood, so I don't even need to overemphasize. Let me just continue. So they are grace. They are this group of people have the grace not to allow intruders have access. So it's just like gatekeepers. And I also believe that this is an attribute that most of us women must have. Maybe in the life of our families, when we find ourselves in groups, you like, you know, just like spiritual gatekeepers, you stand at the door, you mount the, the gate of your marriage, the gate of your house, and say, I'm not going to allow intruders to get in. That's what salt does to food. It stops the microorganism from having access to that food. Because the only things the microorganism will come to do is to destroy it. They don't have any good intention. They come there to infect the food, affect it. So it will, you know, it can cause diarrhea, whatever, food poisoning. It can, you know, destroy the, 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 the lives of people. So salt starts to say, no, 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 no. I have to make sure that you do not have access. So some of us have been wired. We have been called as dehydrators to make sure that's in true that do not come. Some of us, it could be at your place of work, you may act as a dehydrator. So long as you are there, external harm cannot have access unless you are unaware, unless you are absent. Hallelujah. This group of people, they block all access through which um, diseases, not like physical disease, but you know, from the content we are talking about, you know, of the world, this is of the world, let's put it that way. So with all these things that happen in our society, if you go to social media, there are people corrupting young children. Sometimes a lot of people are afraid to allow their kids have access to social media because there are some um, microorganisms in the name of people, you know, or in the, in the, in the, how can I put it? Let me put it that way. There are some microorganisms in the name of human beings that are actually there to penetrate the society, to penetrate media, to make sure that they cause certain people to leave the, 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 the train, to leave the part of God and walk with the part of the enemy. Those are the assignments. We can, we can liken them to be those microorganisms that actually affect the food actually affect the society. So if you are called to be a dehydrator, you are actually you are actually be called to block all access through which our microorganisms on social media in the world have have the ability or the access to penetrate and cause damage. This group of people are actually very patient and they're observant. You know, they don't talk too much and they really observe because for you to actually um, be a gatekeeper, you must be an observant. You want to know, okay, you know your daughter so well, something is not right. Even though she hasn't told you what is happening, but because you're an observant mother, you should be able to know that, okay, there's a microorganism somewhere trying to penetrate. And then you come in quickly as a mom to stop that particular um, disease from penetrating into the heart of your daughter or your son. So they're actually very patient and they're observant group of people. And we can see an example of um, a dehydrator in the Bible. Mordecai was an example of uh, a dehydrator. The Bible says, if you can pull us that extra chapter six, verse two. Extra chapter six, verse two. I mean, if you read through that extra, extra, extra six, you see the whole of the story. But we all know that Mordecai was at the gates. We were even talking about gatekeepers. It says, and it was found it was found within that Mordecai had told of Bitana and Teres, two of the king's eunuch, the doorkeepers, who had sought to lay hands on King Ahazerus. On King Ahazerus. This name is always very difficult. On King Ahazerus. Hallelujah. So we know about Mordecai. And the Bible told us that he was at the gate. And this was two eunuchs. They were planning just like microorganisms were planning to have access to the king to kill the king but because Mordecai has been wired or he actually built that skill whatever the case may be either it was an inbuilt um skill or he actually practiced or built it I mean I feel like to an extent all of us are interrelated we must practice all of this because there are times in what it might be imperative for us to use them and Mordecai could not be silent because so long as he was in the gate, he could not say, okay, I heard the eunuchs talking about it and I sat quiet and I did not do anything about it. So he acted as a dehydrator, making sure he stopped it. He did not even allow it to have access. Remember that discussion was taking place at the gate. 
He did not actually enter the kingdom. He was at the gate. So he stood at the gate and he said, because I am a dehydrator, I'm not going to allow that, that idea, that wicked plan to prevail in the kingdom. He did not allow it. He did not say, oh, 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 the king has not done anything to me since I'm here. You know, I gave him, I gave him my cousin. I was supposed to be sitting on the king's table. I was supposed to be in a better position than this. Why am I on the gate? After all, I'll just pretend as if I didn't hear. In fact, as a matter of fact, I was not the one who said it anyway. So God will not hold me accountable. So I don't care about it. No, that's not what he did. He understood that I had to play a role as the salt because actually none of us are, are, are none of us are that white as salt. If you see us, you won't see anything that looks like salt. So it means that salt is more spiritual. God calls us the salt. There are certain attributes, there are certain things we are going to do that is more spiritual and physical. None of us actually want to even become the pillar of salt. If He says that He should turn none of us not to a pillar of salt, nobody of us, none of us will accept because we don't like it. So Mordecai understood the spiritual part that no, I cannot. The reason why I was kept out the gate was for a purpose like this, to act as a dehydrator, to make sure that while I am there, I cannot allow people around me. I cannot allow the, the, the people, the people that God has put around me to plan evil against the king. So he stepped in to stop it. So because of his presence, because when we'll be looking at the next point, you see the difference. You, do, you see a difference in what I'm saying. Because of his presence, they did not even try. It's not like they tried and they failed. He made sure he acted quickly by making sure that the king was not killed. It's not like they actually stabbed him then in the hospital. You know, he survived after some medications. No, he stopped it. So those are the functions of dehydrators. They make sure that microorganisms don't have access in any, in any form. They stop it. So we, they are called gatekeepers. Another example we can see in the scripture of somebody who acted as a dehydrator, that, that, that chapter is so amazing, but I don't know if we'll probably read some of it. Uh, can you just be looking for um, First Samuel chapter 20? I just want us to see some key things Jonathan did to David. Jonathan was a, a, a dehydrator. He acted as a dehydrator. For those of us who know the story or the relationship between Jonathan and, and, and David, Jonathan was the son of Saul. And if you look through the book of First Samuel, you discover that Saul did not like David. Saul was after the life of David. But you cannot imagine Jonathan, you know, kind of who used the word despise his father just because he needed to act as a dehydrator for David. Some of us have been called like that. Some of us have been called like that. Okay, let's see that First Samuel chapter 20. Um, I don't know, just put it up. I will choose which part to start reading from. Um, okay, let me start from verse two. No, let me just start from verse, okay. <laughs> let me just start from verse one. Then David fled from now in Ramah and went to, and went and said to Jonathan, why have I, what have I done? What is my iniquity and what is my sin before your father that he seeks after my life? Obviously he's talking about Saul, yeah. So Jonathan said to him, See the first statement, Jonathan said, say, by no means you shall not die. Indeed, my father will do nothing, either great or small, without first telling me. And why should my father hide this thing from me? It is not so. Then David took an oath again and said, your father certainly knows that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said, do not let Jonathan know Leave this lest he be grieved, but truly as the Lord lives and as, as your soul lives, there is but a step between me and death. Verse four. So Jonathan said to, so, and David said to Jonathan, indeed tomorrow is the new moon. And I said, and I should not fail to sit with the king to eat. But let me go that I may hide in the field until the third day in the evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David earnestly asked permission of me that he might run over Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. And if he, and if, if he says thus, it is well, your servant will be saved. But if he's angry, be sure that the evil is determined by him. Therefore, you shall deal kindly with your servant, and you have brought your servant into the covenant of the Lord with you. Nevertheless, if, if there is 
Nevertheless, if there is iniquity in me, kill me yourself. And why should you bring me to your father? Just go down. Let me see if that was Jonathan's response. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see that verse 8. Okay, let's just read what Jonathan says. Say, Jonathan said, but Jonathan said, far be it from you, for I for if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father to come upon you, then I would. I then would I not tell you? And Jonathan said, okay, I don't want to read all of that. I don't know the specific, I didn't write the specific verse. Just keep it. Let me explain it. You can take it off. Now, if you look at the relationship between Jonathan and we have read a little bit of it, of course, Saul was planning to kill um, David. And he talked about the new moon. Normally, because um, um, David was working with Saul on the Saul. So the new moon festival, David was supposed to be there. And then both of them agreed. They went into a corner. And if you read through the scripture, they agreed that, okay, you know what, Jonathan, just stand for me. If your father asks of me for three days, I'm not going to be there. If he asks for me, tell him I had a yearly sacrifice to take place and all the rest and all the rest. And which we know the story, it happened like that. Um, when Saul asks of um, David, Jonathan stood up and said, oh, you know that. Um, so, sorry, David took permission from me. And the Bible recorded that he was furious. He was mad. He was angry. That old oh, Jonathan. So you're struggling to cover up and all the rest. But prior to that time, when you read the script, scripture, you discover that both of them took an oath. And David, Jonathan promised David that, you know what? If I discover that my father actually wants to kill you, I'll give you a sign. I'll let you know. So you are going to flee. What are we saying? That was somebody who acted as a dehydrator. He made sure that I, it doesn't matter if I'm the son of the king. So long as I am alive, I am not going to allow evil to have access to the life of David. He's a dehydrator. He does not allow because his dad was acting as a microorganism that affects food. His dad was actually seeking after the life of David. But then when Jonathan stood up, he says, no, 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 unless I'm not aware. He said to David, God forbid that anything evil comes to you. Most of us, sometimes we can do it to our kids, but we cannot do it to the other people that God has put around you. For those people who are in the third world country, you might be privileged to listen to me. You can be your mate. The person must not be your biological child because most often some of us also have this inbuilt love as mothers. We can say, okay, we can actually act as dehydrators, but we are not ready and willing to act as dehydrators for those that God has put around us. It might be the house care. It might be the driver. You should be a dehydrator to that person. Not that you know there's danger, that you are aware there is danger, but you actually allow the person to be involved in it. If you do that, you're actually failing as the sword to this generation because the reason why God made it possible for it to get to your hearing, the reason why God made it possible for you to know about it is because he wants you to act in this capacity. So as I said, we must be able to build some of these attributes we must be able to incorporate them per time, per season. You might not be a full, you know, you might not be fully equipped to be a dehydrator, but there are situations that may warrant you to act in the office as a dehydrator, making sure that certain things do not have access to that territory where you have been called to, the organization where you have been called to, your marriage that has been given to you, you can act as a dehydrator. Making sure that people don't come out and, you know, so sit in your marriage that are not necessary. That can actually destroy the family. So we have been called to be dehydrators. Now, the third, the third reason, not the, no, not the third reason, the third point under number two. Remember, we are just on the second function. We are looking at salt um, can be used for food preservation. And under food preservation, you have A, refrigerator, uh, refrigerator or refrigerants. B is dehydrator, and the C part now is that salt presents and um, prevents food from fermenting. It pre um, prevents food from fermenting. Now, this one is slightly related to dehydrators, but there is a vast difference if we are able to understand that. So salt normally can prevent the growth of bacteria, yeast, and molds. It prevents the growth of bacteria, yeast, and most. And I think this one too is, is actually very practical. Normally, um, I've done it a couple of times, especially when I was back home. When your food, let's say, we didn't have fridge, 
when I was growing up, we didn't have fridge, right? Now I'm giving my own story. So let's say um, my mom buys beef or something, and maybe she sends it. Sometimes she should send it from the market, and most maybe we're just plain we're careless. We did not boil that meat. Maybe since morning, because we all know what happens. Microorganisms are very fast. They attack food so quickly, especially if there's any form of moisture. That's why we looked at how salt, salt absorb moisture to prevent microorganisms. So when micro and when moisture is available on, in food, not too long. I don't know how they sense it, but not it's just like showing um, salt. Before you know it, you not know you have sugar ants. They just give salt and um, sugar some few minutes. The whole place will be full with sugars. So that's the same thing that happens to food. When a food is too moist, raw food is moist, and you don't do anything about it, the microorganisms in less than no time. So you just need to buy meat around 8 a.m. tied in a, in a bag, just keep it there. Maybe for the next six hours, if you don't do anything about it, by the time you open it, it's already you know smelling. So how does salt act? Maybe you were you were slow, as I said. Sometimes my mom will send it. We did not even know. In fact, we did not open the bag. We just left it there, and she comes back from the market maybe around eight o'clock. That day, just know prepare yourself because it won't be easy. You know, it's when there was no money back home, and somebody buys meat. You the children allow it to get bad or something. She actually talk and talk. But what am I saying? Sometimes if we allow the meat, it, it has been in the bag since morning and she comes back from the market seven o'clock, 6.30. By the time she said, oh, you guys did not check the meat. I, I was like, ah, I didn't even know there was meat there. Anyway, by the time you open that, that plastic, you discover that the meat has really, the color has really changed. That's the first thing you discover. The color has changed. It now has one particular order. So especially those of us back home, maybe, yeah, you can say, ah, you just trash it, but there you cannot afford to trash it. If, I, if you trash it, what are you going to eat? So we'll do everything possible to try to stop the bacteria from having further access. So you don't only use salt as a dehydrator. Remember, dehydrators stop. They block access. They don't allow microorganisms to even have their way. But now when you use salt as a means of preventing fermentation, it's a situation where actually maybe not your fault or maybe unintentionally that particular people around you, or let's start with food, the food has really started being affected. Now, although the food has not been fully affected, but you already have some bacteria, maybe it has started, mold has affected already, or yeast has started forming up. What salt does is that it prevents it. So if the meat has started smelling, all you need to do is to put salt. When you put salt, salt does not actually, at this point, have the capacity, just like insurance, to restore that meat back to its original position. But from the moment salt is put on that meat, from that moment, henceforth, it stops. It further stops bacteria from growing. It stops the yeast from growing. It stops the mold from advancing. I don't know if I'm making sense. So it's actually different from dehydrators. It, dehydrator will stop it from even having access. But if you, you are acting as, you know, if salt is being used to prevent fermentation, it means it just stops it from going further. I guess I've been able to explain that. So, um, so as I said, they, okay, dehydrators block access from uh, microorganisms to get access into the food, but ferment, um, fermentators, controllers, controls the bacteria that has already affected the food, but its duty is to retard the effects of the bacteria or external factors from having access. So who are this category of people who want to put in our own lives? Obviously, I think that point already explained it. I think we don't even need to. These are people who they may come into an organization, they may come into a fellowship like this, and they begin to say, oh, you know, Sister Maria made a mistake here. This leader made a mistake. Something is missing. Something, um, this, you know, um, something is not going right now they don't have any control over it because the deed is like the deed has been done but these are people who may lose their peace they make sure that okay yes this has been done but something can be done to prevent it from 
advancing to prevent the evil from penetrating more and more. These are people who are, they just carry that passion in them. Some of them, you might not have it, but then there are certain things you see. You say, ah, don't just say this person is, com nothing is completely bad. Those are the category of people that don't easily give up on people. Say, okay, your own don't finish. No, they don't say that. They say, no, you might have made a mistake. You might have done this. You might have feel you are not good enough, but I'm here to let you know that there is something that can actually come out even out of your mess. They stop the bacteria from growing and then they can institute some beautiful things that could help manage the situation. And there's some, there's somebody or there are a couple of people in the Bible too who acted like this or there's somebody in the Bible who acted like that as, you know, as somebody who prevents evil from going further. Truly, most of us, we cannot change the whole world, but we, some of us are coming out because we know that there is a possibility that you can change some because you cannot actually change everybody. But what if you say, say ah, the world is already corrupt, you know, diaspora is just the worst, evil dwells, Sodom and Gomorrah, this is it. You know, you just say there's nothing that can be done and you don't do anything about it. You are not actually acting as the soul. Because at the end of the day, people have to still make up their mind. No matter what you say, no matter what you preach, they still have salvation. They have to say, okay, I've made up my mind to, you know, give my life to Jesus Christ. I've made up my mind to become a better woman. They have to actually make that confession. But you coming out to speak or you making sure, maybe it cannot be naturally, um, necessarily talking like that. But maybe there's just somebody at your place of work. Maybe there's somebody that God just put beside you just to be you know, help that person from further fermenting. Some people, some, some of us may, be, may grow or become um, um, a nuisance to the society, not because we actually wanted to. Maybe culture, maybe where we grew up in, maybe society, having to discover it that uh, children, we, children who grew up in the ghetto, there's just that one um, lifestyle all of them have. You won't blame them. But all these children who grew up in houses that had fence, who born you for even pass beside the fence? You haven't been born. So actually, most of them will grow up maybe now from what their parents teach them because they have, actually have a driver that picks them up, you know, drop them to school. But some of us, you have to walk, you know, you carry some group of battalions to go to school. So all the things will be communicated are the things that may design your life. So what are we saying? Some of us have been called to stop it, to say, okay, yes, you might not be able to have access when they were young, but there, maybe there's something I can do to stop maybe the things they're listening to, their association, the people they relate to. You try to make sure that they don't have, longer have access to those wrong companies, and then you now institute the right companies in their life. Some of us have been called like that. Hallelujah. So an example we can see in the Bible is Nehemiah. We can see that he acted, he was an example of a fermentation controller. He was an example. The Bible, so if you look that scripture, the Bible makes us understand, you know, as of the time he got the news, they told him that the wall of Jericho has already been destroyed. So it was not like the wall, the wall was already destroyed before he heard. But then he did not just say, ah, you know, why are you telling me? What should I do? The wall has been destroyed and so what? Let me just continue being the cup bearer. That one, as a matter of fact, I'm not in Jerusalem. So it has nothing to do with me. No. The Bible says ne ne Nehemiah arose. He loses his peace. He was sad for the first time. The king said to him, Ah, Nehemiah, something should be wrong with you. Because I've never seen you in this mood. Because he was a fermentation, you know, and controller. Other people were there, actually there in Jerusalem, but they, it didn't affect them. They didn't see anything about it. Say if it's, if it's there, let all of us die. How does that concern me? There's some people like that. But Nehemiah was somewhere else. He heard just the news that the world of Jericho has been destroyed. Jerusalem, sorry, has been destroyed. He said, no, 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 no. There's something I need to do. I need to prevent these people from having access to Jerusalem. And he got up, he arose. And there was something that we can learn from this scripture. I don't know if it's on our side, but then, you know, the Holy Spirit may want to teach us this because I don't know those who are listening to me. Every time we come here, there's just something for somebody. And you let's imagine, Nehemiah was a cup bearer, right? Nehemiah, remember when we talked about those people who have been called or, you know, God is expecting some of us to be um, flavor, um, 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 seasoning agents or flavoring and um, um, enhancers. We said people that will make your potential arise. And we also talked about um, 
uh, we feature around people who, if you are around them, nothing is permitted to die. Let's look at this Nehemiah as an example. Yes, we have seen him as a fermentation controller. But guess what, right? Nehemiah was a cup bearer to a king, somebody who tastes the food to make sure that there's no uh, poisonous substance. So if he was to die, he would die first, right? That was his, his role. But Nehemiah did not know that. I don't know if he did not know or is that he did not constitute, whatever the case may be. Now, there are some of us who are actually in the wrong place. We have been called to something different. Nehemiah, that shows, makes us understand that Nehemiah was not designed to be a cup bearer. He had something in him. His people were waiting for him. But he was actually somewhere doing something which he has not been called to do. He was a cup bearer. Some of us have maybe in maybe locations or maybe jobs or maybe careers or maybe marriages. So many things may happen in the lives of women and even men that we are actually in a place where we have not been called to. We have actually underestimated ourselves. We have actually felt we are lesser than that. You know, Nehemiah never knew. In fact, the, the book of Nehemiah is a book that has been advised if you are a leader. And all of us are leaders. If you are a woman, you are a leader. You will lead your siblings, you lead your children. So it doesn't have to be a leader in the congregation. We are all leaders in one way or the other. We have been called to lead. Because whether you like it or not, there are some people watching you. There are some people watching you. They won't comment. They won't tell you, but they're observing you. So everybody, even if it's just your kids, there are some people watching you. So you are a leader. You are a role model to somebody. But most of us have minimized our position. And that is why we see a lot of things happening now in our generation. A lot of us, you know, get into a place where we ought not to be because we did not know we have been called for more. We are not aware that we have been wired for more. Some of us have been years after years as a cup bearer. And God is saying, no, 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 I have designed you to be a controller, uh, um, a fermentation controller. There's a generation of people waiting for you that you have to build the world. And so you cannot sit at the king's house just because you have three square meal, you know, to eat. After the king has eaten, you just be so relaxed and you do nothing about it. But you have been wired and you have been called to be a controller, um, a fermentation controller. So until this time, Nehemiah was in the wrong place. Until this time, it looked like he was actually doing nothing, but in heaven, he wasn't recorded because that was not what he has been designed to do. It is important, even as we look, I don't know if I deviated, but it was important for us to look at that. Look at the other side of Nehemiah. Look at it. We, there's no place we actually applauded him so much, you know, as the cup bearer. But look at the difference he made when he stood in as a fermentation controller. When he stood him as a cup bearer, maybe the only person he affected was the king. Some of us have been called to affect more than our households. And we have just been there sitting on the same position. Say, me, I'm not gifted to. I can't talk. I can't do this. The world will mock at me. People will say this. People will say that. Trust me, at the end of the day, some of them will come back to watch you. If, you're, if you are consistent with what you do, at the end of the day, some of them will say, I thank God to, for the day you made this decision. At the beginning, it will never be that sweet. Because nobody's actually going to buy your idea. So we must advise. Some of you or some of us, the reason why we are here is for a purpose like that. Maybe you have not been called to be here forever. But you can be here so that you understand what you have been called to do. And you actually work in that capacity that God has called you. So your flavor will not be, be, be lost. Remember that particular scripture? We have never even talked about it. That if you lose your flavor. So I, I'm very sure Nehemiah was losing it because that was not where he has been called to, to act according to the agendas of heaven. That's not where he has been called to. And look at it, immediately he accepted the, the fermentation uh, um, controller. His, his talent was everywhere. He affected the whole of Israel. Everybody was affected. Nobody knew about him prior to that time. He made the a difference. Now we can we can use him everywhere as a role model. If you want to be a leader, go read the book of Nehemiah. You will learn how to be an accurate leader, how to lead people. Nehemiah was an example, but he did not know, I'm sure, or he ignored it that he had this capacity. I don't actually think we're digressing. You want to find out, am I actually doing what I've been called to do? Because if you are not actually doing what you have been called to do, therefore your salt, you are the salt, but it doesn't have taste. Because nobody's benefiting from your salt. Salt is there to make a difference. So if you are existing and nobody's benefiting from you, the Bible says, oh, put you on the ground and men will trample on you. 
And at the end, you're going to give an account of it. That's the amazing thing. What is the thing that God has laid in your heart? You know, but you are just scared of what people will say. Nehemiah actually stood up and said, no, 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 I cannot be silent. Yeah, I have a job, but there's something higher than this job. There's a calling greater than this. My people are waiting for me. And guess what? A lot of people, and he was not the only, I'm very certain that he was not the only um, fermentation control. I'm not sure. In the whole of Israel, he was not the only one. But there's so many other people who refused to stand up. So many others. So many others. And if he didn't rise up, if he didn't arose, what would have happened? The Bible, if you read that story, talk about Sambala, Tobias. Those are the people who were actually making sure if he didn't rise up or if he didn't arose, they would have destroyed the people. But because one man decided to know that ah, I've been called as the sword, I shouldn't limit myself. I shouldn't limit myself. I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong location. I'm a, I must arise because my generation is waiting for me. Hallelujah. My generation is waiting for me. And then now the third point, we have looked at the three sub, um, three, even, the, even Ezra is an example of, 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 if you read the book of Ezra, you discover that even Ezra is an example of um, a, ferment, a fermentator controller. The third point we have as the function of salt. Now this is a third function of salt. The first one is as a seasoning agent or a flavoring enhancer. The second one is salt is used to preserve food, which I've looked at the three ways you can preserve food. And the third one, you can also use salt for strengthening, especially through green. I mean, I got to know about that way when I did the research. I didn't know about it, which I'll explain. So it can be used for strengthening. I know it might be a little bit weird, like strengthening. What do you mean? But we'll look at it. That's why we have come to learn, you know, um, especially through the process of brain, brain, there's a process called brain. And what is the brain process? The brain process means sub, um, submerging meat in water that has been dissolved with salt. So the meat absorbs the liquids and the salt to make it juicier and you know more flavorable. So putting um, salt, it's a process where they put salt in water and then they take the meat, they put it in that water so that the meat will absorb moisture. And so it absorbs the water and also absorbs the salt. Now, this situation, I want to explain. I know just explain that I won't understand, but I'll give us a practical example of what it means. Um, for example, let's, I want us to use Xinjiang. And um, my apologies to people who are from different nationalities. I don't know. Let me think of what um, general thing. Um, I don't know if I said it before. Bread, um, salt in bread is a major component. So there's no way. I mean, the bread we eat, all of them have salt. I don't know if I said it the last time, but I did a research. I was like, wow, I was even telling my husband. I said, I've never known about this. You know, you salt, salt that they use for bread is not for the taste. They say if you don't use salt in bread, the bread is actually going to, you know, scatter. So the reason why they, I don't know if I mentioned it last week, the reason why they use salt in bread is, is so it's an imperative component when baking bread to use salt, not just for taste. It uses to, maybe we can even talk about it as strength because it uses to bring the, 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 the flour together. It helps all of the other ingredients you use, you know, to, to, to make the composition whole. That is why when you, you actually have bread, bread does not just, you know, come out in, in crumbs. That is the function of salt. So they say when you make bread without salt, there's a deep, big difference. The bread is just actually going to, you know, fall off, fall off like that. So salt helps it. It's just like a strengthening agent to an extent. It helps it to bring it together. That's the function of salt. I didn't know. I was like, oh, wow, knowledge is power. I've never known that prior to this time. I didn't know about it. So that's a major function of salt. But now in this situation, because I want us to have an understanding of what I'm saying, so you know what is God's expectation, that it could be a part of it, it strengthens, but this, that does not really apply to this. Now, let me use Ching Ching for those who know what Ching Ching is, then I'll try to think of it. Ken, if you can think of any other things other nationalities do, that is, um, um, anybody can think, just put on the screen so other people who are watching us from different countries and different nationalities will understand. But Chin Chin, for those of us in Cameroon, I know Nigerians know it too. Nigerians know what Chin Chin is. What we use, we use flour, butter, oil, meal, um, not milk, bake. Is it baking? Do they use baking powder or squat? 
baking powder, huh? baking powder, I think I've come the, the measure ingredients. So you mix all of those things together, make the dough, we roll it, we cut it in, in smaller um, sizes. It, we use it for snacks, it's an amazing snack. I like it, so we use it. Now I want to say something about salt. You can actually make chin chin, let me put it the American way, chin chin. You can actually make chin chin without using salt, right? So if you make chin chin without using salt, um, pretty much it's, it's, it's consumable because sugar is one of the main things you know, we use for chin chin. <laughs> we use for chin chin. Sugar is one of the main things we use for it, right? So you can actually make it without using salt and people will eat it, they will enjoy it. But if you use salt for chin chin, it's going to make a difference. The reason why they use salt in making chin chin is because it enhances, it brings out the sugar flavor from it. It brings it out. It helps it to, to be, what's the word can I use? It helps the sugar to like sprout forth. It enhances it. So just a little salt you put balance the taste. Okay. Somebody says, Sister, Sister Kelly says it helps to balance the taste. So although you can make chin chin without salt, any chin chin that is made of salt, and if you, if you have made chin chin before, you discover that the quantity of salt you use is very small. You just use small salt, but it just enhances. It's that thing that makes the, the sugar comes out. It tastes better. It just makes the sugar taste better. But without salt, it's as if the sugar is a little bit demoralized. Let's put it that way, just for the content of understanding. That's what we're trying to do. So in this situation, salt is almost looking insignificant. But salt is used as just, how can I put it? Can we use the word as associate agents? So these are the categories of people. If you have been called to be a strengthener, it means you are that of person that have been called, you actually have salt, but the salt you have in you is not, um, the salt you have in you is not sufficient to make a difference in your generation. We are going somewhere and I want us to understand. It's not sufficient. So by yourself, standing by yourself, you might be limited to make an impact. But you are the category of people who have been wired to actually, you know, work with somebody, connect with somebody in order for your saltiness to make an impact, in order for your saltiness to be amplified. So by yourself, by your own inbuilt saltiness or talent, you are actually not going to make a difference. You are actually not going to make a change. But if you associate, if you become an associate, an agent, you work on behalf of somebody, then you are going to make a difference. And I think the example of Chin Chin we gave, there are a lot of American things that that's the reason why they put salt. I'm just for some reason, if somebody thinks of it, you can put it so other nationalities can benefit from it. But there are certain things, if you understand what I'm saying, that you are actually cooking or you're trying to make you can do without salt. It's, very, it's going to make a difference with the taste. But salt only helps to bring out that thing. So, for example, like a ministry, for example, a fellowship, there are some people who have been called to advance the vision. They might not actually be on the screen. They might not actually be on the, on the stage to hold the mic. But they have been wired as strengtheners. They are the people who support the vision. Even salt and my being food. Doesn't say. We're talking about salt, but he does not know about Maggie. So let's <laughs> we'll concentrate on the one that God has called us to. That's why we said the other things, you know, we know we talked about substitute, but there is nothing that actually can act as salt. Right? And we're looking at like the example that really matches with what enhances it. We don't put Magi in um, in Ching Ching, so we actually do not know about that. So what, what am I saying? Going back to our main thing, we are trying to say that those things that are actually very insignificant, you are in the society, you feel like, okay, you know, I'm not too good enough, but then the extent to which you are good is enough to to help the organization, help the company, help the church, help the fellowship, help your community. You know, you act as a strengthening engine. Yes, the person is that person is at the forefront, but we are the ones holding them. We are the ones pushing them. And you are very important because without you, those people you look at to be role models or the giant or the strong people, they cannot stand. 
So you are actually being called to be a strengthening. You strengthen. You advance it from the back. Examples of such um, um, people, or let me just read what I had down. This indicates that, okay, I said this indicates that salt is not the only determinant of change here, but they collaborate with other determinants to make the difference. So if you actually do changing and just salt, it won't taste well. Pretty much that's what they are saying. It won't taste well. You have to add it with other things, other things to make the changing come out well. So salt is not the only main thing you use in that particular situation, but it has to collaborate with other determinants to make that particular thing, dough or whatever thing you're trying to make, to make it look beautiful. The same thing with a puff puff. I guess I just remember now, the same thing with puff puff. That's the function of salt. I remember, you know, they usually say, don't use enough sugar. The first time I made it, I gave a puff puff. I gave us this example. I just put salt there. I did not put enough sugar. I mean, even myself, I could not eat it. So that shows that it's not salt you used to make. It's, salt is not the only thing you used to make puff puff. You will need sugar. So both of them need to blend in order to make the taste you know, amazing for consumption. So you are not needed all by yourself in this situation. You need to collaborate, associate with a particular organization, fellowship, in order for your giftings to manifest. You can see an example for somebody who is a keyboardist. Trust me, the day a keyboardist is not in church, you actually know that a keyboardist has an importance in that particular fellowship. So these are like keyboardists, like counselors. You know, if God has called you to be a counselor, you can be a counselor to a president, a counselor to higher institution, a counselor to governors, a counselor to universities or secondary schools. So those are various areas God has called you. But just a counselor on itself, you might not be able to exhibit your potentials. You actually need an association. You need a firm. You need an organization to collaborate with, to attach with, so that people now know you, what you can do, what you are capable of doing. I don't know if that point we are making sense, but maybe if we look at an example in the Bible. But I have some things, let me just say. Uh, this, this group of people, their impact and function cannot be revealed until they work with somebody or a team. I've said that already. This is an area of saltiness that so many people struggle with. I wrote this down this morning. You know, nobody wants to actually serve. Nobody wants to serve, although they have been called for that. It's a position that a lot of people don't want it. Everybody just wants to be the boss. So if I'm not the boss, I'm not, I'm not anything. Yes. If you don't, if you don't want to put me on the on the limelight, then forget about it. But trust me, if you don't understand, maybe at one point, sometimes you might be called to be the boss, but at one point you might be called to be a strengthening, strengthening agent. Your effectiveness as a strengthening agent is what will actually help you to be a good leader. So we must understand maybe at one point or the other, we in one way or the other, we have been caught, you know, at various stages in our life. So if you actually ignore it, it might be very detrimental for you as a strengthening agent. So you want to identify maybe from somewhere, what have I been called? Just like what the Bible says that we are all the body, somebody's the hand, somebody's the eye, the legs. We have all we have different functions. And so if I come in as the eye and I do my part, you come in as the hand, we actually make the body amazing. People would like to look at the body. But if the body, the eye says, no, I don't want to be the eye. I just want to be the eye, head, hand. It won't work like that. So pretty much that's what we are talking about. And an example of somebody with a strengthening agent in the scripture is Ahitophel. I think that's, it. that's, the, that's the best example we can use, Ahitophel. When you read the Bible in the book of 2 Samuel, so far, if you read that 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 23, and then we'll see Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. You don't need to put it, just allow it. I think we have just two minutes. Let me just use it. Now, if you look the story of Ahitophel, if you read it, you discover that he was called. He was, the Bible says, no, if you search it, search it, I would like us to see that scripture. Second Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. Now, so far, Ahitophel was with, with, with David. So long as Ahitophel was with David, his glory was shining. He was an excellent counselor. God has given him wisdom, but not to act alone. He needed a David in order to be able to execute. He needed a David in order to be able to shine. He needed a David in order for people to actually use his counsel. The Bible says now the advice of Ahitophel, which he gave in those days, proud to his destruction, to his downfall, when he was with David. This was what the scripture is saying. It says now the advice of Ahitophel, which he gave in those days, was as one was as if one had inquired at the oracle of God. 
so was all the advice of Ahithophel, both the, with David and with Absalom. Thank you for the scripture. So that scripture is just trying to tell us that prior to what, whatever happened to Ahithophel, when Ahithophel was connected to David as a counselor, his advice, you could liken his advice to a word directly from God. That's an amazing position. It's amazing that your advice can be trusted, that you are somewhere and then, you know, every input you bring is relevant to the growth of that ministry. It's relevant to the growth of that organization. Your boss at your workplace can trust you and say, you know what, if I call Marian, I know she will give me an advice that is going to help push this company ahead. You have been called to be the seasoning agent. I mean, sorry, the straightening agent, you don't have to be the CEO of the organization. But make up your mind that if I'm going to be there for two years, if I leave, this was this is what should be spoken about me. But Aito felt, he understood it at the beginning, but he felt somewhere. The Bible makes us understand when he was a counselor to David, his advice was irrelevant. And God made it so because he was at the right place. If you read that scripture, you discover that it was God who caused his advice not to be taken. It was God because he missed it. He left where he was supposed to be. He said, I wanted to be in charge. The Bible made us understand that Absalom rose up. That was the son of David. He wanted to become the king. His father was still alive. And anyway, he was not called to be. And for some reason, Aito fell now, decided to leave David, abandon where he has been called to serve. Remember, he cannot do it on his own. He needed an agent. He needed someone to work with. He needed a collaborator for him to shine. And we must have this understanding in the body of Christ so we don't lose it. Our soul is not lost. Sometimes you just need to work with somebody for the good of that particular organization. Because trust me, one person will never be able to do it. So God will wire somebody, will give you this advice, will give you this thing. That's why we come together and say, okay, what do you have to say? What do you have to say for the betterment of the body of Christ? But when selfishness, selfishness comes in, you want to say, oh, no, I want to do it this way. At one point, I was asking, oh, God, please tell me, oh, maybe I'm not, I'm not the one who was supposed to do it. I asked, oh, I'm afraid. I was afraid. I'm asking him, oh, I want to go back and trace it from when the idea came. Was it my emotions? Let me find out. So I don't waste my time. I was asking because you maybe you lose your peace. Because you know, oh, maybe you are not called for this. You are called to serve this person. You are called to work with this person to make sure that you guys do this together. Maybe you were called like that. And I began to ask so many questions. I was tracing from the very first day. I had this body in my heart. I was asking just to be sure. Go back to have a confirmation. Maybe I've been called to work with somebody else. Maybe there's somebody who can be the visionaire and I will have a role in it as a major leader. It doesn't change my potential. The world will still celebrate me. I will still shine. I don't need to have the title of a CEO to shine. So I hit to fail. The person we are looking at in this scripture, the Bible makes us understand when he left David, he now said, ah, Absalom. You know, he took for granted that God has been helping. He didn't know that location where he was was important to his relevance and to his beauty. When he left David, the Bible says he now connected, he now associated with, um, with um, Absalom. What happened? This is Absalom trusting, you know, Ahitophel, like what he has been doing before. He said, ah, Ahitophel, you know, I want to be the king and all the rest. I want to get your counsel. Prior to this time, was a good counselor. But the Bible says what? He made sure that the advice of Ahitophel was foolishness. He made sure. So he gave his advice and they did not accept his advice. And the scripture, if you look at, I think, Second Samuel chapter, uh, I don't know if it's 17 verse 23. When Ahitophel died, you don't need to pull it up because time is already against us. But the Bible says when he realized that his, his counsel was not accepted, when he realized that his counsel was um, rejected, he went back to his house. He put his house in order. And the Bible says he hung himself. He committed suicide because he left what he has been called to do. I don't know where you have been called to. I don't know the addition of these things we have added today. It gives a revelation of what God has called you. Some of us have been called as to be multitude. So you are not just called to be one. You can be all of them. But then you have a dominant one. So, okay, I can satisfy. This is my main one. But in this position, when things like this arise, I can step in and act like that. Just 30 seconds. You want to go before the Lord. Father, help me. If you are still confused, Father, reveal to me. How have I been called to be the sword? What area of my life have I been called? What area? Who have you sent to my life that I'm supposed to strengthen? Who have you sent that I'm supposed to add flavor to? 
What have you said? So I'm supposed to help that microorganisms don't affect those people. What have you said? There are some destinies dying because they are listening to the wrong people and God have called you. Why you are still there so that you, your voice can make a difference. You just want to go before the Lord and say, Father, help me. Reveal to me. Let me lose my peace in that area you have called me. I actually want to walk as the sword. I'm sorry for the times I've missed it. I'm sorry, just like Nehemiah, maybe I've been the cup bearer, but you have called me to be a fermentation controller. My people are waiting for me. The destinies of my children are dying, but I'm just a wife. Ah, I'm not yet a mother. You want to ask God, Father, help me. Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you because we know that your word does not go forth without fulfilling the purpose for which you were sent. We thank you for that which we have heard. We come here every day just to become a better version of ourselves. Not that we have arrived, not that we have attained, but that through your grace, we should be able to become better so that we can make a difference in our society. Father, we have heard your word this morning individually minister to us. Individually convict us of the areas where we need to improve, where our generation is needing us, where we need to arise like Mordecai did and made a difference. Father, we ask of your help. For as many people that has heard, heard your word this morning, we ask, oh God, that your word is going to bring change. Your word is going to bring a difference. Your word is going to make us to start working in the position you have, been, you have called us to do. We come against the God of this world that blind the hearts of people. We pray that by the reason of your word, let every obstacle, everything that blocks the hearts of men from actually acting in the office you have called us to act. Let your word have access, penetrate and break them in the name of Jesus. Father, give us the grace to actually be the sword of this earth. Give us the grace to represent you and represent you right. We thank you, our Father, for today. Blessed be your holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen. And if you have not shared the video, please, please. Go ahead and share to be a blessing to somebody. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister, for that powerful message. May God continue to bless and empower you. Let us read from Psalm 32, verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you and watch over you. I would like for us to pray for our leaders of all of the nations of the earth, that God will instruct them that they may be bold enough to stand according to the word of God. Because most of the times when they are coming on to campaign for their positions, they are standing, some of them are actually bold enough to proclaim Christ. Some of them are Christians in themselves, but they are not bold enough to do that when they are at their duty place because of the pressure and the standards in which are already existing there. But as Christians, we are supposed to stand apart. We are supposed to be the salt they are there for a purpose. God put them there because he knew what he wanted to establish for them. And for our nations to be great, we need our leaders to actually come back to Christ, to be able to start believing in the words of Christ, that when God says something, is what he would do, that God is always going to back them up. And so let us pray for divine guidance of our leavers. Let us pray and intercede, O Lord, Heavenly Father, that we pray for our leaders of our leaders. Father, we just see this morning on the rising things that we must learn from the Lord. Let them go to the place of the Lord. Let them bring them into your holy house again. Bring them to that level that they begin to do the truth of the word. Begin to stand for your word and begin to stand for the truth of the word. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you will move them into your holy house. Let your spirit ignite in them, O Lord. Touch their hearts, O oh Father. Sing your word, O oh Lord, that is sharper than two edged sword into their hearts that are to pierce through them, that they shall begin to see that you are the faithful God, the God, God who will always back them up, the God who will always stand for them, the God who can lead them to prosperity, that you will be we send our nations into we put our nations into your will, O oh Father, that you bless our nations, bless our nations, O oh Lord, have mercy on oh for our nations, O oh Father, and to our leaders, O oh Lord, 
Give the Lord the courage, O Father, to do that which is right. Empower them, O Lord. Give them the wisdom, O Father, to follow the right path, to stand for the truth, and to work for the greater good of the nations. In Jesus' mighty name, to the place of righteousness, because the Bible says that if the root is holy, the fruit will be holy. For those that you have called, my Father, to be our leaders, we pray that righteousness should be the hallmark. That because if they are righteous, the people who look up to them will be righteous. Father, we ask for your help concerning our leadership, concerning our nations, concerning those you have put on God to lead us. Let your help come upon them in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 1 19 says, They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, says the Lord, to deliver you. I would like for us to pray for our homes. No. Uh, the 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 reign of you know, say the reign of the devil the challenges that we face sometimes in life we 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 tend to give up on them and we tend to say no God is God has forsaken me God has given up on me and so I'm just going to accept what it is I'm just going to accept that this is what my faith is but God has called us to something great God has called us to have a life of peace and joy and He says in His Word that I will deliver you. And that is what I want us to pray this morning. I want us to pray that God will bring an end to the reign of the devil in our homes, in our hearts. Amen. That we can be able to stand and believe for ourselves in the word of God. Because if we do not believe in this word, then that word cannot be made active in our lives. We need to start believing in it. And so let us pray this morning. Heavenly Father, that we pray and commit our marriages into your holy hands. We Father, pray, we Lord, that we every door of mirror and close them back to you. And we pray, pray Lord, for your reign, O oh Lord, to establish you know itself in our homes and in our marriages, in our lives, O oh Father. Lord, that they begin to show us your faithfulness, faithfulness begin to show us your light, begin to show us your love, O oh Lord. That they begin to touch our hearts again, to begin to understand that you are God over our lives, O Father. Oh, that we say, may you bring an end to the reign of our difficulties. We pray for the end of the challenges of our homes, of our marriages, in the name of Jesus. That you refuse to give up on you because you are a faithful God. You are a God who is ever loving. You are a God who is ever kind. You are a God who has promised us great things, blessings, and love. And you are a God who has established our homes, O oh Father. And so we commit it into your holy hands, O oh Father. And we say no to defeat. And we say no to, to living a depressed life, to living lives that are shattered, oh Lord. We say, Father, come into our homes and begin to reorganize our lives. Come into our homes and begin to do that which only you can do in our lives. We refuse to rely on our own strength, oh Father, and that we say we rely on you, the ever-powerful God, the God who makes the earth in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I start Establish yourself in our homes, oh Lord. Bring back your joy, oh Lord. Your joy, your salvation into our homes, oh Father. Shine your light over our homes, oh Lord Jesus Christ. Over our marriages, oh Father. Over our families, over the lives of our children, spouses, in the name of Jesus Christ. Siblings, our parents, oh Father. Daddy, we pray for your unity. We pray for your love. We pray for your light, oh Lord. We pray for your joy, oh Father. We pray for your strengthening in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, we pray for your spirit to follow, to befall us, oh Father, to occupy every part of us, oh Lord, that each and every one of us will begin to play our roles, to bring about this peace and unity. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, our God is a God of precision. He's a God of, he's a, he's a master planner. If we look at, there are so many stories in the Bible where we come to see how God is able to, or Jesus Christ, whichever one, whether you're looking at the Old Testament or the, or the New Testament, that the Lord is able to say something with precision, explain something that, okay, this is what is going to happen. This is what you are going to do. And if you follow it to the latter, this is what is going to come up. Our God is a God who knows the future. He can see the end from the beginning. And if God wills it, he can plan our lives in such a way that he can align our lives in such a way that he knows the people we will encounter. He knows the, the things we will encounter in life that will bring us favor, that will bring us love and joy. I want us to pray this morning for our expectant wives. 
that any woman who is out there, who is praying to God, who is looking unto God, who is ready, whether they are Christians or not, let God shine his light upon them. Let them mm -hmm. recognize the light of God in their lives. God can use this as a way to draw his children closer. We're praying for every woman expecting a spouse in their lives that God, by his divine alignment, will align the paths of his children to meet one according to their desire, according to their heart's mm -hmm. desire. Because God does not just bless us, he gives us our heart desires as well. He meets our needs, not just our wants. Well, not our wants, but <laughs> God meets our needs. And we're praying this morning, and we want to ask God, Father, we pray that our need this morning for every expectant wife is that you will you will connect them you will align them to their their mm -hmm. their spouses that mm -hmm. man who will learn to respect them that man who will love on them that man who will show them the attention that they deserve that man who will be able to build the kind of home that they love that man with whom when they come together they are a force to reckon with Christ that man who with whom that will help us to help help your children to grow in you even better. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we pray you align the paths of your children like you did for Mary and Joseph. That we see may you align our paths, our Lord, but with precision, oh Father. Because we know that you are more than capable and capable. There is nothing impossible. That we pray that may you bring your, 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 your spouses, your children to one another, oh Lord. We pray, oh Lord, for this connection, oh Lord, for Every, against every destruction. We pray against any evil spirit that may want to cause your children to go down the wrong path. That you will pray, oh Father, that your children will not give up on waiting on you. Your children will not give up on believing in you. That you will pray, oh Lord, that your promises will come to pass in the lives of your children. That you will pray, oh, oh, oh Father, that as your children are looking unto you this day, oh Father, that you let your blessings fall on them. Like may not be an encouragement in their hearts, that you minister unto them one to another, oh Lord. Reveal to them, oh Father, reveal to your children what their, your expectations are, what, what, where you are leading them to, where they should go. That you are praying, oh Father, that they will not miss it, oh Lord, Father. They will not fall for the fake, oh Father. That they shall see with their keen eyes, oh Lord, the eyes of the Spirit. They shall discern within them, oh Father, that which you have blessed for them, that which you have specially made for them, that which you have created for their own good. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that your children will not fall on the wayside in the name of Jesus Christ. By your divine alignment, oh Lord, let your children walk according to their steps. That you guide your, the steps of your children along the path, oh Lord, to your establishment. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And finally, we're going to pray for our expectant mothers. You know, when a woman is childless, let's say so, over a period of time, no matter how God-fearing she is, there is a point that she comes, that she sits and she asks herself questions that are depressing, questions that are heartbreaking. There is no human that will say they have always remained strong at every single point in time. At least there is one moment that in which they have doubted something about themselves or about God. And these are the things that the devil uses to to, to hold down the children of God. You see a, a fervent a child of God and they are ever faithful, ever loving and ever trusting God for no good reason or maybe for reasons known only to God. Uh, they, are, they, are, they are term with which, because society or our African cultures especially, expect that, oh no, when you get married, bam, 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 you just have kids, why are you waiting? People start looking at you and asking you questions, even if it was not your plan to start at that time. Exactly. And those things add pressure over your life for no good reason. The, that, the devil finds its way to just meander into your heart and try to start bringing you down, start killing your spirit. What I want us to pray this morning is for, the, for empowerment of the children of God, not mm -hmm. to look down on the God who is ever faithful, not to mm -hmm. turn their face away from God, because the devil will always want you to give up, to always say, ah, this God is not, is not, is not looking on me. I'm just going to find my own way. Maybe if I go and meet this person or I pay that five francs somewhere, it's going to help. No, we want to pray for divine empowerment for, uh, over the lives of every woman who is expecting the fruit of the womb. That God, that is not just for God's timing, but that God's 
strengthening power to be over them. Because if there is a waiting period, that waiting period, God is working something. Let them begin to see that which God is doing. So their lives mm-hmm. feel more fulfilled, feel more mm-hmm. established, that they stand stronger in Christ, that they, they can they can be able to speak with boldness, with that uh, uh, capacity in them knowing that I know what God is doing. I know why I am here at this point in time. And I know that my establishment is tomorrow. Amen. Heaven living Father, that we commit your glory. Oh, thank to you. Me. We pray for we each and every one the of fruit of the woman. Be, be it is that is by it. Be it is because the you the just don't want them to the have it at this point in time because you are still working something in their life. Be it because of the thought of the so Father. Lord, we could bring them back into your water. And we say, Father, strengthen them. We pray, oh Lord, may you empower them with your word. May you empower them with your spirit. May you open their eyes to see that which you are doing in their life. Show them how much of a faithful God you are. There's going to be a revelation in their lives, Father, that they begin to they will begin to build that capacity in you, build their confidence in you, that they will find no reason to doubt you, oh Lord, that they will find no reason to look the other way, oh Father. They will find no reason to step out of the line from you, oh Father. But they will will trust in your process, they will trust in your end establishment, that they will trust in the path in which you are walking, oh Father, they will trust in you who is ever faithful, who is ever loving, the God whose word is yes and yes, that you will touch the minds of your children, may you touch the bellies of your children, oh Father, that it those who are ready, those who are, it's time for them, that it is time for their establishment, that they establish their wounds, for those whom you are still working on, that it, that it, that it strengthen them, empower them, give them the courage, give them the force, oh Lord, give them the drive, oh Lord, open their eyes, open their minds, give them that vision in which you are running in their life, that is so that they will run with passion, with more grace, oh Lord, to, 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 to overcome those obstacles that are standing in their way, those things that they need to accept, that, that, that to accomplish in their lives, oh Father, so that they, they too can be nursing mothers, they too can be mothers worldly, proud to call themselves mothers, Others, in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will encourage your children, oh Father, that they will, they will not they will not give up on you, but they will be able to go the work, the process that it, this process that you are putting your children through. That it, in the name of Jesus Christ, blessed be your holy name, oh Father, in Jesus' mighty name we pray, Amen. And let us read from our Psalms twenty. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Amen. Amen. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Amen. Amen. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. Amen. Amen. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all plans, all your plans succeed. Amen. Amen. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of the Lord our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Amen. Amen. Now I know that the Lord sees his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Amen. Amen. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Amen. Amen. Oh Lord, save TTW. Answer us when we call. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for this privilege that you have brought us together safely in good health. We give you all the praise. Thank you for your work today. Father, together as a family, we decree this week open in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. We decree that this week is blessed. Wherever the soul of our feet we touch, Lord, we shall take possession over it. And whatever thing our hands find to do this week shall be prosperous in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against any form of emergency, any form of bad news this week. We decree that this week is being hidden in the palms or in the hands of the Lord. And because we're in his hands, we we are, you know, protected from the fears or from the plans of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, see, we meet again next week, Monday. Nothing shall be broken. Nothing shall be missing in Jesus' matchless name. We have prayed. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us 
all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Facebook family, for joining us. Have a beautiful and amazing week. We'll see you next week. Bye.